everybody, welcome to Catherine Sews. Today I'm going to be finishing the camisole that I started in my last video about French seams. In that video, I sewed the side seams with beautiful French seams. So if you haven't watched that one yet, definitely check it out. Today I'm going to finish the top edges with bias strip. And I'm also going to create the straps using bias strip as well. It's a gorgeous technique and it's not very difficult and it eliminates the need for any inside facings. So the final garment is lightweight and beautiful on the inside and the outside. I hope you learned some good skills from today's video and if you do, you know what you gotta do. You gotta hit that subscribe button. I'm trying to grow this channel so I really appreciate it when you hit that red button. I'm gonna give a bit of background information so if you've got this part you can skip ahead. I'll put the timeline in the description below so you can just skip ahead to whatever part of the video is most relevant for you. But stick around, I've got some good tricks for you. So before we can talk about bias, we need a little bit of fabric terminology. Every fabric has a grain to it. There's the lengthwise grain or warp of the fabric and that runs parallel to the selvage. And then there's the crosswise grain or weft that runs back and forth. Most of the time we place pattern pieces on the lengthwise grain. Once in a while it is actually better to put your pattern pieces on the cross grain and maybe I'll do a video of that in the future. But back to bias, it's the angle between the lengthwise grain and the crosswise grain. It's the 45 degree angle where no threads run in that direction. And because there's no threads holding it that way, that's where you find most of the stretch in fabric. And so designers use that stretch for various effects. And we're gonna be able to do that today. So first of all, what is bias and what is bias strip? A bias strip is simply a narrow strip of fabric cut on that 45 degree angle. So bias curves beautifully in a way that a strip cut on the strain of grain just can't do. Let me show you what I mean. This strip is cut on the bias. You can see the texture of the fabric going across on that 45 degree angle. And look, it will bend and mold into a curved shape. This one is cut on the straight of grain. There's the texture of that fabric running right along it. And it just cannot do the same thing that the bias can do. Look at the difference. I just can't mold that into a curve in the same way. That's the beauty of bias is that we'll take that shape where a straight of grain piece just cannot do that. You can purchase these pre-packaged strips of bias. They're already cut and folded, and they're actually pretty handy. So it kind of looks like that, um, where it's pre-folded. And it's a cute, nice way to finish an edge. In fact, that's what I did with the top I'm wearing. This was a thrift flip, and when I bought this one, it had a real, you know, a choky neck. The neck was just so high, it was super uncomfortable, and I'm sure that's why somebody gave it to the thrift store. So when I bought it, I just cut the neck down to a comfortable level. I used some of this bias trim to just put it around the neck edge. I even used it to make a little loop for a button at the back. So for this top, I brought the bias tape around the neckline and into that button loop. But for most garment construction, I like to use bias that's cut out of the same fabric. First of all, obviously it matches better, it's softer, and it looks more professional. And it's not that hard to do, so let me show you how. So for an edge like this that ends up being about eight millimeters, just a little over a quarter inch wide, I use a strip that's an inch and a half wide. To cut bias, use a heavy ruler, and a rotary cutter. If you don't have these things, then you can use a regular ruler, but never, please, never use a rotary cutter with a lightweight ruler. You can really give yourself a bad slice because the rotary cutter pops up onto this skinny ruler, so that's a no-no. So either heavy ruler and rotary cutter, or a lightweight ruler and either wax or just even a pencil. So you're either cutting it directly with the rotary cutter or drawing your lines and then cutting on the lines with scissors. But because bias is stretchy, when you're going to cut it, it can get really wiggly. And that's one of the challenges. That's kind of the hardest part of doing bias strips is getting those strips cut really nice and straight. That is the key to the whole technique. You gotta get your strip straight. So let me show you how to do that. So to cut bias strip, I will lay this line, the 45 degree angle right along my selvage. Now, if you don't have a ruler that has that, no problem at all. All you're doing is going from corner to corner across the squares. 
just follow that line corner to corner across all those squares along your selvage. Any angle in here is bias, but the true bias is that 45 degree angle. It's called true bias. Another way to find that true bias is to fold your fabric. Bring this torn edge, which we know tears right between th two threads, and so that is the crosswise grain. Bring that right up to your selvage, and you could press that. That's your 45 degree angle right there. I'm gonna use that diagonal line right across those corners of my ruler. And with a sharp rotary cutter, I'm gonna just be able to slice right through there. Nice, eh? Okay, and then I like to work with inch and a half or four centimeter wide strips. You can go a little skinnier if you want, but it the skinnier you go, the trickier it gets. Kind of just manipulate your fabric until it gives you that straight edge. There we go. I'm laying that inch and a half line right along my cut edge and then go again. Nice. So you want your strips nice and straight like that. You can use a more normal ruler. I've got again a see-through ruler which really does help and I'm putting that inch and a half line right on my cut edge and then I can just go in and cut with scissors. For this camisole I needed two strips that were 14 inches long, at least 14 inches long for the neck edge, but then I also needed two strips that were 24 inches long to become the straps. And because bias takes up a lot of fabric, sometimes it's hard to find an area on your fabric that you can get that whole 24 inches long of bias. So sometimes you have to join two pieces together. That join can look really professional or it can look kind of terrible. So the trick is when you cut them, to let the strip end in that 45 degree angle, not perpendicular across the strip. And then you'll lay them right sides together to join them. You don't want to go corner to corner because you're going to be sewing here and you'll be missing all of that. Instead, you overlap so that it matches at your sewing line. So if I sew the edge of my presser foot, I'd want it about like that. And then that spreads out the bulk of the seam. It spreads it out kind of in a coil around the strip instead of all being in one spot and creating a lump in your strap. So to join the two straps together, I'm gonna to be sewing from this V right straight down to that V. Now the strips are joined together, I can press that seam open and flat. You can trim off these corners. For the neck edge, I'm going to start by taking one of my 14 inch long strips and putting it right side to the wrong side of my camisole. And this strip is a little extra long, so I can let a bit hang out there. And I'm going to try not to stretch either one, either the neck edge or the, the bias strip. They're both stretchy because the neck edge, it, this is bias here too, where you're cutting across the angle. So it's really easy to stretch that out of shape. So I have the bias strip on top, the neck edge underneath. And to make sure I don't stretch this out, I'm just going to compact it a little bit. I'm using the edge of my presser foot as a guide and I'm keeping edges together. At the iron now, I've got the camisole laying right side down, wrong side up, and I wanna just push that out over the seam allowance. Remember to always test your iron out on your fabric and make sure, especially with the synthetics, make sure your fabric is not gonna melt. And look how nicely that edge turns and this this bias curves so beautifully in a way that you could never get if you used a strip cut on the straight of grain. Now my next step is to bring this outer edge just to touch the edge of this seam allowance and press that again. Make sure to have your neck edge curving in the shape that you want it to take. Now I'm going to take that folded edge and bring it down to just cover that seam line and press again. You can let it cool in this shape and then add a few pins, especially if your fabric is 
not quite holding the press. So now I'm going to be sewing right on the edge of the bias trim. I'm going to trim off the extra piece of bias in line with the raw edge there. And now I'm going to do basically the same thing. I'm going to leave a little extra at the back. And I want to have the right side of the bias strip to the wrong side of my garment. And then I'm going to sew again, edge my presser foot, trying not to stretch, especially trying not to stretch the camisole. Now back at the iron, I want to do that first press the exact same way, pushing that seam allowance over onto the bias. I want to continue this same fold all the way up the rest of that strip. I turn that seam fold all the way. Okay, now at this point, you have to get a friend to pin the two strips together at the back before you can finish. You need to know exactly where they should connect. So I got my camera shy friend to pin those together and now I'll show you what to do next. So now that my friend has pinned it together like this, I'm gonna put the two straps together and just make sure I'm matching up those points, right? The seams there, I'll match that up. And then just make sure that, the, that they are the same length. And there is quite a difference here. So there is a three quarter or two centimeter difference. And so I'm gonna make this one a centimeter shorter, this one a centimeter longer to split the difference. This is how my friend pinned it together. There's one edge, this is gonna be where I sew. So I want the edge of the underside to just be that quarter inch away from the sewing line. I'll move my pin to replicate the sewing line. And then on this side, the underside, I'm just going to trim away, leaving just that quarter inch. Good. Awesome. So now I just need to join it the way I did before, turning them right sides together, matching them up, not corner to corner, but sewing line to sewing line. And then I'll just sew across there. It's easy to get yourself twisted here. So now that I've pinned it together, right side together, I'm just going to double check. There's no twist. We're just fine. Good to double check because I have made that mistake before. Back at the iron, we're pressing that seam open and flat. To be able to work in this tight little circle, if you had a tailor's ham, that would be perfect right now. You could use a rolled up towel. I'm just rolling up this ironing pad, but basically we wanna be able to work in this tight little circle. And just like we did before, we're bringing the outside edge now to just touch that first fold. Remember to trim off the corners at your seam because they will give you extra bulk in there, which we're trying to avoid. When you're done all that fiddly pressing, now add a few pins. Just the same way we did the strap, so that it's on the body of the camisole, it's just covering that line of stitching. And then once you're past the edge of the camisole, you just keep going, pinning those edges together.
Good, so I've pinned all around, and now I'm gonna start at the side seam of the camisole so that my back tack is a little bit hidden. I'll start with a small back tack there and go all the way around. Get this strap under the presser foot first so it's in place, and not in your way. definitely want to get my edges together here. See that bottom one poking out? I don't want to see that. I want to get them nicely together. Really important here to have edges together. We don't want this poking out. We also don't want it slipping under so that we miss it. So go slowly, organize as you go, bring your edges together and go. This technique of doing straps also works beautifully if you ever sew a bathing suit. Totally slick and professional, yeah? And those joins in the seam, can you even see where the join is? It's right here. Nice, see? Eh? Okay, that top edge is done. I absolutely love it. It's so pretty. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you got some good skills out of that. And if you didn't already, please hit like and subscribe because that keeps me going. I really appreciate it. Here's a little sneak preview of my next video. I'm going to finish this camisole now with a fine rolled hem on the bottom, which is another really lovely little delicate technique that I think you're going to like.